The Quiz Kids, brought to you by the makers of Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer for headaches. Alka-Seltzer for acid indigestion. Alka-Seltzer for cold distress. Yes, when these occasional ailments make you miserable, take Alka-Seltzer for really fast, really effective relief. And now, attention, Quiz Kids, listen closely. Here's today's first question. If you gave a party and received a bill for $3.19 and looked at it in the mirror, you could read the item you had purchased. What was the item? There's a quickie for you. Adjust your thinking caps, friends, and see if you can't come up with the answer while the youngsters here in our classroom get settled at their desks. And here they are, the Quiz Kids. <laughs> And now, and now meet the man who is always Johnny on the spot with the questions and who hopes he won't be uh, put on the spot with the answers. Our genial chief quizzer himself, Joe Kelly. Thank you, Bob Murphy, and hello, everyone. Well, we're ready to have another tussle with those three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic here in Radio Famous Classroom of the Air. These competitive school sessions are unique in many ways, friends, but one of the most outstanding features is the fact that our quiz kid pupils come to school without their books or papers, and they have not the slightest idea of what subjects will come up for discussion. You listeners decide that, of course, by the questions you send in, and this afternoon we have some fine ones. So let's have roll call and consider them. Ready, children? Here we go. Joel? I'm Joel Coverman. I'll be 12 years old this Tuesday and in a departmental in the Volk School. Lonnie? I'm Lonnie Lundy. I'm 12 years old and in seventh grade at Lincoln School in Park Ridge, Illinois. Naomi? I'm Naomi Cooks. I'll be 10 years old this Tuesday and I'm in the sixth grade at Grover Cleveland School, Chicago. Everybody's having birthdays this <laughs> Tuesday. And we have two new faces in school today. Noreen? I'm Noreen Novick, and I'm in 10th grade at U-High. I'm 14 years old, and I'm not having a birthday for You're not. Eh? <laughs> That's cute. Whit? I'm Whit Humphreys. I'm 11 years old. I'm in the 6th grade at Ellsworth School in Naperville, Illinois. All right. Now back to that first question from Mrs. Jesse Weikert of Amory, Wisconsin. If you gave a party and received a bill for $3.19 and looked at it in the mirror, you could read the item you had purchased. What was the item? We have four hands up. Noreen's hand was first. Well, that would be 319 backwards, and that spells pi. Pi, absolutely right. That's correct. 319 reflected in the mirror would spell out pi. Well, that question seemed as easy as pi for you quiz kids. Your answer was absolutely right, and that means Mrs. Jessie Weikert of Amory, Wisconsin, wins a fine Zenith Transoceanic Portable Radio, the most outstanding in its field today. That's Alka Seltzer's reward to every listener who sends us a question which is used on our program, friends. If the quiz kids answer your question correctly, you get your fine Zenith Transoceanic Standard Shortwave Portable Radio in a good-looking luggage case. If they miss, the reward is the big 23950 Zenith Radio Phonograph combination. Now, this has the automatic record changer, the new Cobra Tone Arm, two FM bands, and it's a real beauty. You'll be exceptionally proud of either Zenith Radio, so send your questions along, folks. Send them to Quiz Kids Chicago. Ethel Lewis of Colorado Springs, Colorado, wants you kids to make up rhyming campaign slogans for the current presidential candidates, and each one should be very complimentary. For instance, you might say, there's no surpassing Harold Stassen. Now, that's the idea. Now, I'd like to have you, if you can, compose three complimentary uh, campaign slogans while we go right along with the questions. And at the end of the program, we'll see what kind of slogan maker-uppers you've turned out to be. And to get you in the presidential candidate mood, let's try this interesting question from Viola M. Locks of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. At least three times in past elections, the two presidential candidates were nominated from the same state. Now try and get two out of three on this question. Can you name the two presidential candidates who were nominated from the same state in 1860? Joel? In 1860, it was Abraham Lincoln, and I believe the other one was Ball. No, I'm sorry. I... You're right on the first one, Abraham Lincoln. 
And the other candidate was whom? Oh, Joe? Douglas. That's right, Stephen Douglas, both from the state of Illinois. Now, which two candidates from which state in 1904? Joe? In 1904, it was Theodore Roosevelt against Alden Parker. Well, it's uh, Alton B. Parker. That oh. was his first name, both from the state of New York. Now, which two candidates from which state in 1920? Joe again. In 1920, it was, uh, let's see, Warren B. Harding and I believe Davis. No, no. Lonnie? Well, I have a slight correction. It's Warren G. Harding. Warren not G. Warren, Harding. Not Warren B. Harding. Yes, and uh, the other candidate was whom? Warren G. Harding back in 1920. They're both from the state of Ohio. And do you give up on this one? The other candidate was... Going, going, gone, James M. Cox. Well, that saves the question. I only asked for two out of three, and you gave me two out of three. Now, kids, since this is I Am an American Day, this question about American literature from uh, Minoru uh, Toki of Sacramento, California, is uh, very appropriate. You are about to hear three sound effects. Each one should remind you of the first name of a well-known character created by an American author. Now listen to this first sound effect and recall the name of a character created by Mark Twain. Here it is. Lonnie? Well, I don't know who the character would be, but I think that's a Tom Tom. It's a Tom Tom, so that's right. Be a character whose name begins with Tom. Yeah, and, and uh, you can't think of a character. Uh, oh. A well known American author? Yes, uh huh. Uh, oh, well, I gave you his name, Mark Twain. Oh, 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 Tom Sawyer. Oh, oh, yes, yeah, that's right, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, uh, Noreen? Well, I was also thinking about that, Tom. Tom, it might also represent the character Injun Joe in that story. Well, uh, that's true. That's all right, Noreen. That's fine. Uh-huh. Tom, Tom, the Indians, all that's true. Now, uh, the next sound effect uh, suggests the first name of a famous character of Lou Wallace's. Listen. Lonnie? That's um, Big Ben. Big that's Ben, so? Ben Hur. Ben Hur, that's right, by Lou Wallace. And the last sound represents the first name of one of Washington Irving's characters. Listen. Noreen. It's Rip Van Winkle. Why do you say that? Because it was ripping. Ripping cloth, that's right. Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> well, all right, children, we'll consider this next question after we hear from Bob Murphy. Say, I wonder, uh, did you have a big argument with yourself at the dinner table today over whether you should or shouldn't have that second piece of pie? Well, I, I won't ask which side won, your willpower or the piece of pie. Instead, let me suggest, on those occasions when you do overeat and acid indigestion is the result, be wise. Alkalize with Alka-Seltzer. Yes, just drop an Alka-Seltzer tablet or two into a glass of water, listen to it fizz, and then drink it down. We believe you'll be amazed to see how soon Alka-Seltzer begins to ease up that stuffy, uncomfortable feeling in your stomach. It isn't long before you draw a deep sigh and say with relief, Hey, I do feel much better. Yes, friends, for relief from acid indigestion, Alka-Seltzer is fast. Alka-Seltzer is effective. Alka-Seltzer is dependable. And so that you'll never be without it, get that extra package when you buy. Remember, an extra package on the side keeps the family well supplied. All right, kids, here's a quickie from Mrs. E. Nelson of Chicago. What one letter of the alphabet is not used in spelling the names of any of the states in the United States? Noreen. Yes. Would you say, honey? <laughs> no, I think you'll find X in uh, New Mexico. Uh-huh. What do you say now? Z. I can't hear you. Z. 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 No. Arizona. Lonnie? Q. Q is right, absolutely right. <laughs> Carol Beckdahl of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, has heard you kids answer opera questions before, but she thinks she can stump you on hers. She has made it as hard as she can uh, for you are to identify two operas from the names of very minor characters. First, 
In what opera would you find Basilio, Bertha, Fiorello, Ambrosio, Naomi? The, ba the Barber of Seville the by bar Rossini. That's right, The Barber of Seville by Rossini. <laughs> Try this group of minor characters. Inez, Ruiz, Ferrando, Azucena. Joe? Uh, wouldn't that be from Carmen? No, no, Naomi. El Trovador by Verdi. El Trovatore, that's right, by Verdi. Okay, hey, we're just scooting along here on questions, aren't we? Hugh Cole in Kennedy Veterans Hospital, Memphis, Tennessee, suggests that you imagine you were the girlfriend of these famous men of science. What song might you appropriately sing to them? The first one is Isaac Newton. What song would you say, uh, Joel? Don't sit under the apple tree. That's right, that's right. <laughs> well, come on. Can you sing it, boy? No. Sing it. Can't you sing it? No. Who can sing Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree? A little bit of it. All right, Lonnie. Don't sit under the apple tree with anybody else but me. Anybody else but me. Anybody else but me. No, no. Yay! Bye. Uh, how about Benjamin Franklin? Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. What song would you sing? To him, if you were his girlfriend, Noreen. It's extremely far-fetched. He's the one who, who took the um, cut out in the rainy day, and you could use that song about the wind and the rain in your hair. Well, yes, uh, uh, yes, uh-huh, that's true. And uh, can you sing part of that? Mm -mm. You can't, eh? Lonnie, you have one? Why is this corny? Uh, he, uh... Well, now listen, now, uh, this is corny, Lonnie. He discovered light, or he, uh... Um, work with lightning, so uh, and lightning is supposed to strike, yes. so you could have strike up the band. Oh, I get it. Yeah, that's fine. Strike up the band. Joel has it. Well, uh, this is also corny, oh. but uh, you could sing Jimmy with the light brown hair because hair has locks, and locks has key, and he uh, discovered electricity. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's wonderful, Joel. That's right. <laughs> Because he flew a kite in a storm, you could sing High on a Windy Hill. High on a Windy Hill. No, you're right. Uh-huh. Well, those were all very, very good, even though, as you boys say, uh, a couple of them were corny. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's pretty hard to really understand or know what corn really means when we say it like that. Uh, Gladys Barnes of this city says that she's so impressed with the modern French tapestries, which have been touring the country, that she wishes we all had the wallpaper designs based on characteristic paintings of modern French artists. Suppose your dining room were papered with a crisp green jungle design. Who would be the artist? Noreen? Well, Rousseau would be one of them. That's he right, didn't. Henry Rousseau. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And how about this next one? If you papered your hall with a design of haystacks, who would be the artist? Lonnie. Uh, that's, uh, oh, what's his name? He was, oh, no, he was, the one I'm thinking of was English Constable. Well, uh, now, wait a minute, uh, Joel? A well, uh, Gainsborough, I think. No, uh, no, He no. drew a little boy blue. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, quite true, but uh, that doesn't enter into this one here, uh, as you soon will find out. Noreen? Well, I was thinking of Malay because he did all the peasant pictures. He did the Angelus and the man with the hoe. What Malay. name did you give me, honey? Malay. No, 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 no. It's pretty close to what I have on my card here. That's the reason I uh, question that. Do you give up on this one? Well, it would be, uh, Haystacks would be, the artist would be Claude Monet. Claude Monet. Uh-huh. He's uh, famous for having painted haystacks at different times of day to show the effect the change of light could have on a single object. Uh, he belonged to the group of French artists called Impressionists. Well... We got lost somewhere along the way on that one, so Gladys Barnes of this city uh, wins a big 239.50 Zenith radio phonograph combination from the makers of Alka-Seltzer. Mrs. T.E. Judkins of Lima, Ohio, says her own children are interested in opera and Shakespeare, but they know more about the funny. In what comic strips do you find people with these flowers for names? Petunia, Daisy, and Buttercup. Lonnie? Petunia is... Uh in uh, oh, Porky Pig or, or any of the uh, uh, characters right. created by uh, Warner Brothers cartoons. And yes. Daisy is in Dagwood and yeah. Blondie by, created by Chick Young. Yes. And Buttercup. Buttercup. Uh, Buttercup. I don't think I know that. Wit? Do you know that? I'll, 
that was, I would have had somebody else. Oh, I see. And uh, Joel? Well, it could, Daisy could be Daisy May from Little Abner. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's another one. Uh, Noreen? Well, I just want to add that that's created by Al Cat. Yes, uh-huh. Well, now, how about Buttercup? Can we... Uh, Clear Buttercup up. Well, isn't buttercup that somebody's up? yellow dog? The what? Isn't that somebody's yellow dog? Yellow dog? Well, not that I know of. Not in the uh, funnies that I read. And I managed to cover all of them. <laughs> and that's something, believe me. Lonnie? Isn't that Harold Teen? No. No. Are we going to miss this one? Going. Going. Well, Buttercup is in uh, Toots and Casper. He's there. Son by Jimmy Murphy in the Herald American here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. All right, well, another miss, quiz kids, so we're giving away another big radio, uh, this time to Mrs. Uh, T.E. Judkins of Lima, Ohio, for Stumping You Experts. She gets a beautiful 239.50 Zenith radio phonograph combination from the makers of Alka-Seltzer. Now, here's a real brain teaser from uh, Mrs. R. Summerman of Chicago. The first letter in the first name of each of these symphony conductors will spell the name of a famous composer. See if you children can figure it out. All right, I'll read the last names of the conductors. You think of their first names and tell me the composer's name spelled by their first initials. Here are the last names of the conductors. Walter, Radzinski, Mensch, and Kindler. Lonnie? That's a... Hans Kindler and uh, Bruno Walter and Archer Rodzinski, I don't know, and Charles Mensch. Charles Mensch. Bach. Bach. B A C H. That's right. Good boy, Lonnie. <laughs> yes, sir. You certainly scored very fast on that one. Now, uh, try this question from Mrs. Hazel Merrill of Eagle Rock, California. By changing the final letters I A to the final letters U S. What capital of what state becomes the capital of what other state? By changing the final letters I-A to the final letters U-S. Joel? Well, now, let's see. Uh, the capitals naming with I-A were once Olympia. Now, let's see. There's... No, Olympia wouldn't uh, be it. No, now, that wouldn't see. work out, would it? No. We've got to get the, what's see, the capital... And Let's see, Nevada. Uh, what other state? After Montana. All right. Idaho. Let's see, Colorado. Wyoming. You're not getting very warm, Joel. Kansas. Now, let's see, I'll try in the east. Uh, uh, <laughs> Massachusetts. New Hampshire. <laughs> Vermont. Maine. Well, wait a minute. Now, you're going off. Uh, Noreen? Well, going along with what Joel began, that would be Olympus, but I don't know what that no, would be. No, no. No, that's, uh, that's incorrect. Joel? Well, now, let's see. Maryland. <laughs> All right, keep going. New York. Let's see. Uh, Virginia. Let's see. Uh, Delaware. New Jersey. Let's see. Uh, let's get down south. Uh, <laughs> south Carolina. Uh, that North Carolina. Lonnie. That's, that's it. Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia, South Columbus, Carolina. Columbus, becomes Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. That's right. That's it. Oh, that was a cover. That's wonderful. It's uh, time out now, Quiz Kids, while Bob Murphy takes us on a little outing. Uh, where are we going, Bob? Well, Joe, now that the weather is nicer and the days are longer, we'll all like to spend more time out of doors. Some of you folks will probably be planning a picnic supper uh, such as this. Oh, goody, goody. Look, Mommy, here comes Daddy now. Now we can go on our picnic. Now we can go. Goody, goody. Martha. In here, dear. And we're all ready for the picnic. I told the children they could start taking food out the back way just as soon as they heard the car. Do uh, you want to drive it around? Oh, Martha, I can't. I can't do another thing today. I've had the most miserable headache this afternoon. Hey, you kids, you take the kids and go ahead. A picnic sounds anything but good to me. Oh, but, dear, we're going to have such a wonderful supper. I fixed deviled eggs and fried chicken, and I baked an angel food cake. My headaches. What I need is rest and quiet, not food. Just leave me alone. I'll do nothing of the sort. What you need is Alka-Seltzer. You just sit still, and I'll fix you a glass right away. And that's exactly what Martha did. Now, uh, let's check with this family a bit later. Uh, 
Can you eat another piece of cake, dear? <laughs> no, no. I'd better quit right here. I'll be having to take an Alka-Seltzer for relief from acid indigestion. It certainly fixed that headache for you, didn't it? Oh, I'll say. And in a hurry, too. I feel good enough now to join our youngsters in a ball game. Say, Martha, remind me to get a package of Alka-Seltzer tonight. I want to keep one at the office. That's a smart idea, all right. Yes, an extra package in the shop can help you feel tip-top. Always remember, there's nothing quite like Alka-Seltzer for fast, effective relief from occasional headache or acid indigestion. Get Alka-Seltzer at any drugstore in either the 30 or 60 cent size package. Say, kids, early in the program, I asked you to make up some rhyming campaign slogans for our current presidential candidates. I'll bet you've thought up some dandies by this time. So now we'd like to uh, hear them. Uh, Whit, uh, would you like to read yours first? There ain't no half to tap. You'll be sorry if you go passing spassing, and you don't want to go saying fooey to do it. Fooey to do it. Those are good. Very good, Wes. Those are fine. <laughs> and uh, Naomi? Well, I got one that's something like this. Whoever says fooey to do it is just plain screwy. <laughs> All right. And by the polls you're passing, you stop and vote for Stassen. All the girls are swooning for Truman. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, those are very fine. And uh, Lonnie? What a president he'd make. Woo-wee. I'm getting in and voting for Dewey. <laughs> uh, why not vote for Joseph Martin? He's, he is capable. That is Sartin. Sartin? No, oh, I have to stretch a little bit. That's all right, though. If you want a president that's not Hodge, hodgepodge, I suggest that you vote for Lodge. <laughs> well, those are all good, Lonnie. <laughs> and, uh, Joe? The one that floated is the man from Minnesota, uh, sort of pun. Yeah, oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> California Forum, it's Earl Warren. W- Warren, uh-huh. And, the, uh, the one that's really smart is Joseph Martin. Martin, I see. Well, those are fine, too. And now here's Noreen. Well, I have four of them, and I'm not showing any preference. Some of them are longer than others. But well, all right, honey, let's <laughs> okay. have them. Don't be blue, you vote for Dewey, number one. Number two, this candidate's viewpoints are human. His ideas and concepts are blooming. You can't do worse than to vote for, to vote for this person. His name, as you all know, is Truman. <laughs> uh, oh, voters, voters all the time is passing. Hurry up and vote for Stassen. Come, oh, come, oh, this is the second, fourth one. <laughs> come on, voters, don't be yellow. Wallace is our fellow. Oh, that was an all good voters. Those were very, very fine. Now then, uh, uh, this question is from A.H. Top of Denver, Colorado. Combine the colors contained in the names of these big league baseball players, Hal White and Red Rolf, and you have the colorful nickname of what player formerly with the Detroit Tigers? Noreen. Well, the nickname is Pinky, but I don't know the player's name. Well, the player's name is, let's see, we have some other hands. Lonnie? Pinky Higgins. Pinky Higgins, that's correct. Uh Uh-huh. Kenneth Lloyd Brown of New York City wants you to juggle the first, third, and fifth letters of the alphabet and arrive at the initials of a government agency very much in the news. The first, third, and fifth letters of the alphabet. Joel? Well, it'd be ECA, Economic Cooperation Administration. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's part of uh, uh, ERP, and also there's EA... AEC, that's A-E-C. the Atomic uh, Energy Commission. That's right. You've given me two of them. There's A- another one out there. And then there's the uh, CEA, Council of Economic Advisors. That's right. All three of them. Good. Very good. Now, you, uh, you all know the rhyme, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. So to please Mrs. Ed Schultz of Cheyenne, Wyoming, can you go on with the rhyme and name any character in literature who was a doctor, lawyer, merchant, or chief? Joel? Well, uh, lawyer, lawyer, of course, would be Portia and merchant of Venice. That's and in the same place, yeah. the merchant would be Antonio. And what, what were the other two? Well, uh, let's see, the uh, uh, merchant... Uh, Doctor, lawyer, merchant, or chief? Well, the doctor would be Dr. Miracle in Merchant of Venice. And what was the fourth one? Chief. Chief, uh, I don't know. In literature now. 
All right, Lonnie? Well, there's Dr. Aerosmith, created by Sinclair Lewis. Yeah. And uh, well, there's been a lot of stories written about Chief Sitting Bull. Chief Sitting and Bull, yeah. did he mention the merchant and the merchant of Venice? Yes. Uh-huh. That's right. And Naomi? Well, it could be Dr. Jekyll, created by Robert Louis Stevenson. That's right. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Now, um, Noreen? Well, there could be any number of Indian chiefs in, in Indian literature. Well, just Montezuma or any of those old ones. Well, that's true. Well, of course, we want to... Does it have to be English literature? Beg pardon? Does it have to be English literature? Uh, yes, uh-huh. Well, I just thought of a doctor that, Dr. Heidegger, I believe he's pronounced it, by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Oh, and, uh, Lonnie? Well, there's Dr. Doolittle, created by Dr. Hugh Doolittle. Lofting. Yes, Joel? Well, uh, for Chief, I believe there's a number of stories about Chief Logan. Uh-huh. All right, well, fine. Those are all very, very good. You gave me a lot of them there. Now, no sooner have the trees become all beautifully leaved out then Sarah Goodman of Portland, Oregon, asked you to remember what they looked like when the trees were bare. Now, can you tell how you would identify a sugar maple tree before you could see any buds or leaves, Noreen? Well, it fans out of the top. The what? It fans out of the top, and yes. it's kind of bushy. That's true. And are there any other things that... Uh... Well, the branches come sort of pretty in a sort of a curly Q shape. Yes. Uh-huh. And... Uh... Can we, uh, Lonnie? Well, isn't there something about the coloring of the bark? Well, uh, isn't it, isn't it, uh, that's, that's right. Can you... sort of streak? Well, well, not exactly. With? Well, uh, the maples are pretty hard to tell apart by their bark, but, uh, you can tell the maples, but not the general kind. Yes, well, we're getting, uh, let's clear up that, uh, color uh, angle that Lonnie brought up there. Joel? Well, um, I know... Uh, not on that, but uh, I couldn't, uh, wouldn't the sap be in the tree at that early time and you could tap the tree and if it was a maple uh, tree that sap had come out? Yes, that's right. A little bucket would be hanging on a peg <laughs> in the maple sugar season, February, March, or April. Now, uh, getting back to the color, the uh, bark, uh, the color of the bark would be sort of, uh, sort of grayish. Now, uh, how would you identify a linden tree before you could see the leaves? A linden tree. Oh. Joel? Wouldn't there be uh, cocoons of, I believe, some sort of bugs, I believe, silkworms? Well, no, now, wait a minute. We're, we're talking about the tree before we get the buds and uh, before it blossoms out. With? Well, uh, I, I'm not sure of this, but I think they have very big buds before they open. Well, uh, yeah, that, that is uh, quite true. And, uh, of course, the linden tree is shaped somewhat like a pyramid and has a very sturdy trunk slender, upright, uh, close-growing branches. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's it, the old school bell, as usual. It means class is over for today. The judges take over now, and I see they're already busy adding up your scores, children. They'll have the final totals for us in just a minute, and while we're waiting, we're going to ask Mother to pay particular attention to this message. Mothers, are you having trouble getting your children and your family to take their vitamins every day? Try giving them one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsules. Each one-a-day brand multiple capsule contains all the vitamins for which the amount needed for grown-ups and children has been established. What's more, one capsule every day is all they take. And one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsules are low in cost. A full two-month supply for only $2. Ask your druggist for one-a-day brand vitamins. Good for growing children and adults. Remember, for vitamins the easy way, for vitamins the thrifty way, the brand you want is one-a-day. All right, quiz kids, let me have your attention. The judges have finished adding up the scores, and here's a report on today's competitive question session. Remember, though, whether you win or lose, each of you receives a $100 savings bond from the makers of Alka-Seltzer to help you with your future education. Here's the verdict. The judges report that our entire class missed two questions this afternoon. Lonnie is first, Joel second, and Noreen third. So you three will be back in school next Sunday to compete with Rochelle Liebling, age 8, and a new quiz kid, James Wolfe, age 12. Next week, as our guest observer, we'll have Oscar Ewing, Federal Security Administrator, who recently appeared before the National Convention of the American Association of School Administrators. Mr. Ewing will be interested to hear how you quiz kids handle the naughty problems that will be presented next Sunday. And I know you listeners will want to be on hand, too. So now, until next week, when well, I hope we can mark all you folks present in class, this is Joe Kelly dismissing the quiz kids. Goodbye, kids. Goodbye, Mr. Kelly.
Listen to the Quiz Kids every week and listen to Alka Seltzer's News of the World every Monday through Friday over most of these NBC stations. This is Bob Murphy speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.